Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon, Anita. How are you? Fine, thanks. And you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking, Anita. So I'm waiting for your for your classmates to join. Muestra a los chicos para que se nos unan. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to um we're going to begin week four, but la semana cuatro de trabajo, así que eh, pues vamos con quizás un review rapidito, right? About what we did last week. And then we're going to move to section five, a la sección cinco. La sección cinco de hecho es un poquito corta en el sentido que eh, Tiene, tiene solo can and can, and can ¿verdad? Que es uh, for ability. Así que eso lo vamos a estar viendo, bueno, vamos a hacer la introduction hoy, ¿verdad? And then probably we uh, will continue working during the week, ¿verdad? And, well, let me see. Today is October 18th, right? We are almost finishing the month. Estamos ya finalizando finalizando la segunda parte, ¿verdad? No, oh, ya estamos entrando allá a la, a la otra semana, right? So that's going to be only two more weeks and then probably we'll be moving to the next month. Now, guys, this is, this is session 13. Así que este jueves prácticamente terminamos el módulo, ¿verdad? Así que hay que estar pendientes de la plataforma, right? Eh, para que esté ya eh, todo listo para el día jueves, right? Um, remember that Thursday is the day when you have to finish, you know, um, each of the sections, right? And not only that, you have to reach, right? El cansar, you have to reach the 80%, right, that uh, you need to have your certificate or diploma in reach. Okay, so this is session 13, October 18th, and we're going to start. Now, today, we're going to begin with section number five. However, right, we're going to have a quick review on the last grammar uh, thing that, or the last grammar structure that we mentioned uh, last week, last Thursday, right? And we were talking a little bit about adverbs of frequency, right? And we were saying that uh, generally adverbs of frequency are the ones that we use to express, you know, that, to express frequency or the frequency, right, that, uh, in, in which we perform an activity, okay? Entonces, yo también les compartí otro, otro cuadrito ahí en el chat en el que podían ver incluso otras opciones, right? Which are kind of similar, you know, among them, but you have uh, different options, options, I'm sorry, to choose from. But the basic ones are the ones that you can see on the board, right, on the screen, right? You have uh, always, usually, often, sometimes, hardly ever, and never, right? So we were saying that when we use never, the word, the, the adverb never is already a negative one, right? So you don't have to add something negative to never because it is negative already. So uh, we were studying the structure, right, for the affirmative sentences, which is subject, adverb, frequency, verb, and complement. Y decíamos que la posición del adverbio de frecuencia siempre va a ir entre el sujeto y el verbo. That's it, the position, right? It takes. And uh, we were distributing, right? We were distributing, I'm sorry, the, um, like a percentage, right? Just for us to have an idea, para tener una idea de cómo es que lo vamos a expresar, right? So if we're saying always, it means that we're going to do something 100% of the time, right? If you say usually, that's not gonna be 100%, that's gonna be around 80% of the time, right? Often, a menudo, right? That's gonna be 70%, sometimes, you know, 50% hardly ever, 25%. And when we say never, it's because we have zero, right? We have zero uh, with that type of frequency. Also, we mentioned that we can use sometimes at the beginning, right? Puede pasarse al principio, no hay problema. En el caso de sometimes, sometimes I eat breakfast, right, etc. And this was the structure, right? This was the structure I was sharing with you last week. Y pues lo vimos así un poco eh, rápido, ¿verdad? Este día jueves. And the structure is subject eh, plus the upper frequency plus verb plus the complement. 
And I was giving you some examples and I said, I always prepare a PowerPoint presentation for my class. I sometimes go to the movies. I often eat pancakes, right? And I usually eat dinner at 6 p.m., okay? So I have four examples, right? Uh, what I want you to do is to go ahead and prepare your sentences, okay? I want you to think, quiero que piense y que prepare cuatro oraciones using others of frequency, okay? So in the meantime, right, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. I mean, siempre the adverse of frequency, right? But in this case, uh, we have the negative ones and the question form, right? So uh, when when it comes to that, no sé si recuerdan que les comenté que it was a little bit difficult, right? Uh, sometimes for me to uh, remember because uh, when it comes to the to the you know to the order, right? It was a little bit confusing, at least to me, right? And uh, generally, when we have, you know, uh, well, affirmative sentences, we're going to have it like that, right? Uh, but when we are working um, with negative statement, that's going to be a little bit different, right? So uh, with, uh, with negative statements, right, we're going to add the auxiliaries. ¿Cuáles son los auxiliaries? ¿Quién se recuerda para las negativas y para las preguntas? What are the auxiliaries? Okay, para las preguntas y para las negativas. Ajá. Not. Repeat it. No lo escuché. Bueno, it's don't and doesn't, right? Cuando tenemos oraciones negativas con present simple, we're going to use don't and doesn't, right? That's going to be for negative statements, okay? So, mientras ustedes hacen sus oraciones, cuatro cada uno, ¿verdad? Just prepare four sentences using your adverse of frequency. Y luego yo voy a decir algunos nombres para que me ayuden. Vamos a ver, decíamos que the structure, right? The structure for this one, la que estamos viendo ahorita, decíamos is subject. Of subject plus adverb of frequency, adverb of frequency plus verb plus com. Okay, so those are the elements that you have for this particular one, la que están preparando ustedes. Okay, but teacher, ¿qué sucede cuando ya vamos a trabajar las negativas? Bueno, acuérdense de que estamos hablando de present simple, ¿verdad? Present simple fue lo que vimos al inicio, ¿verdad? That's going to be present simple. Hi, lady. That's going to be present simple. And then we're going to move uh, to the um, to the negative one. Solo de mi momento. Very good. So, um, with the negative ones, como decíamos que tenemos eh, the negative form, it's going to be like this. Vamos a tomar la misma estructura, right, que tenemos acá, the same structure, and we're going to add the, uh, the auxiliary, right? ¿A dónde va a ir? Siempre va a ir after the subject. I don't, por ejemplo, I don't usually eat dinner at 6 p.m., for example. Entonces, aquí va a ir el auxiliary don't o doesn't, dependiendo de, de cuál persona esté utilizando dentro de la oración. Okay? Entonces, I'm going to give you an example. Um, oh, veamos esta. I don't usually go to work. Um, by bus, for example. I don't usually go to work by bus. Okay, probablemente camino, probablemente pues me lleva. I don't know. So I don't, I don't usually go to work by bus. Okay. Um, veamos esta. She doesn't, right? She doesn't. Uh, what? She doesn't sometimes. 
when she does it sometimes. <sighs> Staying in the shower or does the homework, does the homework. She doesn't sometimes does the homework, right? Okay, so that is when you want to say negative sentences, right? Now, what happens with the question form? Vamos a tomar tiempo los elementos. Esto para las negativas, ¿sí? Voy a dejar de compartir acá y les voy a empezar a compartir la pantalla para que vean lo que nota. Entonces, uh, vamos a tomar siempre esta de acá. ¿no? And I'm going to give you the position for the question form. Okay? Now, sabemos siempre, ¿verdad?, que con los question forms vamos a tener siempre un switch, ¿verdad? Porque comenzamos pues nuestra pregunta siempre con el, el auxiliar, ¿verdad? En este caso, pues vamos a comenzar ya sea con do o con das, dependiendo de cuál es la pregunta, ¿right? Perdón, ¿cuál es el subject? Then I have my subject, right? So, Ustedes han estado teniendo dificultades con la plataforma, chicos. ¿Alguien que haya tenido dificultades con la plataforma? No, no. No, okay. no teacher. I was saying, right, with the theme. So that's our our formula for, uh, for the question form, right? So then uh, what we have to do, right, is to insert, right, the other frequency. Now, in this case, if you see in the original question, in the original uh, formula, which is the one for affirmative sentences, we have the subject plus the other frequency, the verb and the complement, right? So in this case, we're going to do the same, right? The only difference is that we're going to add do, does, then the subject, right? Do you usually go to the movies on Sunday, for example, right? Do you usually go to the movies on Sunday, right? Um, do you usually uh, buy the groceries, you know, on the weekend, etc., right? So that's going to be the formula for the question form. Now, la pregunta es, ¿ya tienen listos ustedes sus oraciones, chicos, para comenzar a preguntar? That's going to be four each, cuatro cada uno. Can I start? ¿Puedo comenzar? I'm sorry? No yet. Yes, sí. Yes, ok. Yes. Very good. Oh, no. Ok, so, well, let's have some volunteers, ¿verdad? Como no estoy segura quién ya finalizó, tal vez me ayudan ahí con volunteers, voluntarios. Solo diga yo o levante la manita para que yo pueda ver. ¿Cómo está ver? Volunteers. Me, me. Thank you, Anita. Go ahead. Okay. I always take a shower. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, I usually do exercise. Excellent. I sometimes sleep early. 
I sometimes or go to bed early, right? I sometimes okay. go to bed early. Okay, thank you very much, okay. Anita. Okay. Who's next? Quien sigue? Me, teacher. Excellent, Gorita. Go ahead. I often eat a stream. I couldn't hear that, Gorita. Repeat mm -hmm. it. I often eat a stream. Ice cream. Ah, shrimp. Yes. Shrimp. See? Okay, very good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Next. I usually eat breakfast at 7 a.m. Very good. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. So you okay. talk about eating shrimps, uh, mm -hmm. breakfast, and the last one? Mm -hmm. I sometimes go to uh, uh, comprar in English. Depends. What do you to comprar? Eh, I sometimes go to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Go to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or I, I sometimes do the, do, the, um, do the shopping. También se dice, do the shopping. Go to the shopping. I never eat tacuacin. Es una comida típica eh, de algunos lugares. Tacuacín asado. No, no, I never. Garrobo. Bien, garrobo o iguana. Vaya, pues sí. en inglés, no sé. Vaya, el que yo le decía do the shopping, se lo voy a... Espérame, que está pero súper lento eso. Ajá. Eh, es eso, cuando usted usa do the shopping, es um, to go shopping... To, uh -huh. buy, to buy food, right? So that is to the shopping, right? Eh, uh -huh. Pero no me deja, no me deja compartirlo. Está súper lento. Nice. Un pedacito le voy a pasar porque no me deja copiar. Okay, thank you very much. Eh, thank you. <laughs> okay, who's next? Can you see? Ahí está. Who's next? No one else? Okay. Uh, let me ask. Uh, what about you, Karen Martinez? Are you ready? Karen Martinez? Perdón que estoy viendo para las dos pantallas. Ah, bueno, Teresa, thank you very much. Dígame, Teresa. Perdón, mire, que me acabo de conectar y no sé en qué están ahorita. Perdón. Ah, estamos haciendo, preparando cuatro oraciones con las de de frecuencia como las que están en la pantalla. Okay. Uh -huh. So, Karen, do you have your son? Déjeme ver y, y participo, que participe ahorita alguien más. Uh -huh. Gracias, sé que no problema. Hello. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. I always pay attention in English class. Very good. And sometimes, I sometimes to go to the gym. I often fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I usually go to work at 12 p.m. Very good. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Who's next? Can you see? Mary, is that you? Yes. Okay, very good. So tell me. Okay. I always go to the work walking. En este caso, podríamos decirlo también así, I always walk to work, ¿verdad? Siempre camino para hacer el trabajo, I always walk to work. Uh -huh. Next. Next. Usually, I usually eat seafood. I usually eat seafood, okay. I often go to the dancing. I often go dancing. I, uh -huh. I often go dance, dance. dancing. Mm -hmm. My son hardly ever eat pupusas. Okay. My son hardly hardly ever eat, eat pupusas. 
Ok, en ese caso sería it's, porque es él, ¿verdad? It's pupusa. Pupusa. My son hardly ever eats pupusas, right? Ok. ¿Tiene alguna otra, Mary? No. Ok. Thank you very much. No, it's ok. Now, guys. Bueno. Cuando estamos usando adverbs of frequency, es lo mismo que estamos haciendo, usando verb be, perdón, y usando present simple, right? Porque prácticamente son las mismas reglas que vamos a cumplir. Lo único que estamos haciendo es insertando un adverbio de frecuencia y explicando con qué frecuencia hacemos esa actividad, right? De ahí, the rest, todo lo demás, tiene que seguir las reglas, ¿verdad? Para la tercera persona, tiene que seguir eh, el uso de los auxiliares, right? Which is don't, doesn't. And also the auxiliaries for the questions, right? Pero de ahí, por lo demás, pues, si son afirmativas, Super bien, ¿ok? ¿Alguna otra persona que quiera participar? Yo mis dos. Ok, excelente. Go ahead. Sometimes I go to the restaurant. Very good. I often like to play sport. Mm -hmm. Only. Only that, ok. I go to, uh, to the restaurant. This is the restaurant, ok. Now, in this case, um, cuando usamos the, remember, decíamos que estamos hablando de algo específico, ¿verdad? O al restaurante, en este caso. Yo puedo decir, sometimes I go to the restaurant that is in front, with, in front of my house, ¿verdad? Ahí estoy usando, ahí estoy hablando de un restaurante específico. Ahí se necesita usar the. ¿Cuál restaurante? The one that is in front of my house, ¿ok? Entonces, cuando yo hablo ya en general, no estoy especificando qué restaurante, ¿verdad? Entonces, en este caso puedo decir, I, I mean, sometimes I go to a restaurant. Aquí ese es un ejemplo, hablando de algo específico, y acá podemos decir cualquier restaurante. Sometimes I go to a restaurant, ¿ok? Algunas, algunas veces voy a un restaurante, ¿verdad? Right? Pero no estoy especificando cuál, so that's going to be the, and el otro, the one that is in front of my house, ¿ok? Entonces, esa es la diferencia entre el B y el A, ¿verdad? Usamos B cuando estamos hablando de algo específico. Something very specific. Y usamos A we're, we're talk, when we're talking about something in general. Algo más general, algo más común, común por decirlo así, sin especificar. Esa es la diferencia entre estos dos. Very good. So, ¿alguien más que quiera participar o que tenga sus oraciones listas? ¿Someone else? Okay, uh, what about you? Let's see, Fatima, do you have your sentences ready? Fatima? No, she's not here. Um, what about, well, Teresa, no sé si ya, ya finalizó o aún no. Teresa? Hello? Have you finished your sentences? Sí, verdad, usted ya las compartió, ¿verdad? Yes, teacher. It's true. Okay, thank you very much. Bueno, parece que los demás chicos no pueden participar aún. So, thank you very much, guys, for the information. I'm going to share with you what I have here. Y se lo voy a pasar al chat, okay? Fine. Okay, very good. So let's continue, right? And um, that's going to be for the address of frequency. De hecho, de los adversos de frecuencia, no sé si ustedes recuerdan que yo les, eh, que yo les mandé unos ejercicios, ¿verdad? Entonces, para que ustedes practiquen un poquito, ¿verdad? So, uh, con eso. Uh, now, let's move on. And we're going to do the follow. Okay, vamos a hacer la siguiente actividad. And this is making a shopping list, okay? Entonces, do the shopping, decíamos que esa es la frase que utilizamos cuando vamos a ir a comprar, pero las cosas del mercado, ¿verdad? Las cosas de la despensa. Ay, aquí sería do the shopping, ¿ok? And that is to buy food, ¿verdad? That is to buy food. To buy food. Prácticamente es ir a comprar comida, ¿ok? Do the shopping. So what I want you to do is to prepare your shopping list. Right? 
let's prepare your shopping list and um, we're going to do it like this. Vamos a hacerlo así. ¿Saben qué? Vamos a hacer la mía. Okay. Let's go ahead and start, you know, um, providing some ideas to the teacher, right, to prepare the shopping list. Okay. Así que necesito que me den ideas. Okay. Eh, so you can go ahead and uh, let me know, right, what are some of the things that uh, I can go ahead and can use. Give me one. X. Give me one moment. Solo creo que alguien escribió ahí en el, en el chat, pero no, pero no en el de acá. Permítanme. Un momento, voy a... Think. Piensen ahorita y así luego me dicen sus ideas. Ok, I'll give you one minute en todo lo que yo contesto acá. Okay, so I'm ready. Let me know what are some of the items that I can buy and including my shopping list, okay? Now, remember this. Recuerden esto. Yo cocino como comida vegetariana, right? Así que just pay attention to that, right? Now let's begin. Comencemos. So what are some of the items that I can buy? Soha. Hmm? Soha. Soha. What is soha? Uh -huh. eh, en Spanish es la, la hoja que lleva también eh, la que le ponen al chao min o es como, como también como un como una salsa de soya como oh. una salsa negra ah that is soy sauce yes. soy sauce ok sí Okay. Okay, soy sa teacher. Very good. Soy. <laughs> soy sa. Okay, very good. Excellent. Okay, what else? De hecho, sí, se me acabó. What else? Mm -hmm. Okay, milk. In my case, I love al almond milk. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. That is good. Ah, yeah, it is. What else? Honey. Honey, yes. Actually, I buy a lot of honey. Very good. What else? Well, cereal. Cereal. Tomato. Okay. Yeah, tomato. The tomatoes. Me encantan. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Number five. Mm -hmm. We're going to buy tomatoes. What else? Apple. Apples. I don't buy apples, but we're going to include them. Okay. What else? Broccoli. Broccoli. Okay. Broccoli. Rice. Rice. Important, right? Importantissimo. Rice. What else? Beans. 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 ¿Quién más dijo algo, perdón? Con harina. Harina. Ah, uh -huh. flour. Okay. Uh -huh. Flour. Muy bien. Oops. Flour. Okay. Green tea. Yes. Green tea. Eggs. Eggs. Very good. Butter. Butter. It's true. I buy butter. A lot of butter. What else? Huh? Bread. 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 Okay. Escuché bread. Y escuché... Oil. Oil, aha. Uh -huh. Aceite. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oil. Okay. What else? ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más vamos a comprar? 
Espérame, voy a copiar acá. Me dijeron, ¿verdad? Sugar. Sugar, ok, that's number 16, ¿verdad? 16 sería sugar. Coffee, me escuché por ahí. Cookies. Ah, cookies, I see. Cookies, ok, cookies. Muy bien. What else? Bueno, eh, coffee. Green paper. Green paper. Um, generally, I don't buy, pero esta vez vamos a comprar. Green pepper. Muy bien. What else? Onion. Onions. Yeah, it's true. Okay, onions. What else? Fish. Fish. Peach. Okay. Chicken. Why well, I don't buy chicken. No compro <laughs> pollo ni carne, pero sí compro uh, soy protein, right? Soy protein, right? O proteína de soya. No, no. no. Mm -mm. I mean, yo, yo, sí, yo sí puedo este, comer, pero, pero no, casi no, casi no me gusta, honestamente. Ajá. Ups, perdón. Espérenme, espérenme, espérenme. Es que me dijeron algo por ahí, no lo apunté. ¿Qué me dijeron, perdón? ¿Sal bueno. en inglés? ¿Sal? Ah, sí, salt. Ajá, sí, es cierto. Salt. Salt. Ajá. salt. Um, what else, guys? ¿Qué más de comida? Pizza potato, no. Potato. ¿Qué más me dijeron, perdón? Orange juice. Orange juice. Orange juice. Muy bien. Bananas. Cucumber. Bananas. Cucumber, ok. Chocolate. Cucumber. Chocolate. Bombs. No. Bombs, ok. Bombs, me dijeron que más. Yes. Um, spaghetti. Spaghetti, ok. Spaghetti. Right. Spaghetti, what else? Water. 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 Ok. And etc. Right? Ya me sale, va a salir un montón de dinero, así que hasta wine. Voy a a... No, wine. I don't drink wine. <laughs> But I like cider. Pero la sidra yeah. sí me gusta. La sidra sin alcohol me encanta. Cider. Okay. But yeah, actually, um, uh, there are some some of them that are kind of delicious. En mi caso, creo que a mí lo que me gusta es eh, lo que, como, como que traen. Como que fuera una bebida carbonatada, la siento así. I like it. Okay, so this is going to be my shop, shopping list. También recuerden que ahí en el chat les dejé yo un vocabulario, ¿verdad? Que ustedes pueden utilizar, que está bien completo, trae diferentes secciones. Incluso creo que les incluí unas de, de secciones del supermercado también. Which is something cool, ¿verdad? Si usted la puede imprimir y estudiarla o si la puede bajar desde, desde el dispositivo y de ahí lo, lo está leyendo nuestro no hay ¿Ok? So thank you very much for participating, guys. And now I'm going to move. Me voy a mover ya a una introduction. And this is, introduction is going to be for section 5, para section 5. Les decía que section 5 en cierto modo es bastante cortito porque el tema principal que trae es can. Y can, pues en este caso, for ability, right? Uh, that's going to be pretty much like the, the main thing. Y pues vamos a hablar de Ken and Ken también durante esta semana. So, ya in, iniciando, por decirlo así, en la sección 5, les voy a mostrar acá cómo está distribuido dentro, del, dentro de, la, de la plataforma. Bueno, ¿qué piensa ahí? The first objective is, it says, right, by the end of this class, you will learn vocabulary related to popular sports in the U.S. and Canada, right? As you know, right, there are some sports that probably are not, um, like, kind of popular, right, uh, in our country, but they are, you know, in the States and in Canada. Remember that in this case, um, you know, um, it's a matter of culture, right? So this is the very first objective, the one that we can find here. 
Este es un poco corto, por cierto. Eh, llega hasta el fine point 14 y cierra con un knowledge check, right? So this is going to be the section fine. Después, after that, you will find the exam or the final exam, right? Si lo puede avanzar esta semana, muchísimo que mejor, ¿verdad? O si ya lo terminó, pues, excelente, good brains. But if you haven't, just don't forget, right, to um, check and look for any type of situations that, you know, may um, affect you in the process of finishing your exam. Porque a veces hay ejercicios que son, que, que tienen algún, alguna complicación dentro de la plataforma, pero no venimos a dar cuenta ya el último día, ¿verdad? Entonces, lo mejor es que lo hagan y que reporten si tienen alguna situación. Entonces, let's begin with this section here, right? And I have the first, you know, um, screenshot taken from the platform, right, related to sports. Now, vamos a ver, chicas. Um, do you like sports? Do you like sports? Do you practice sports? Yes. Okay. Very good. Excellent. And what sports do you practice? I am practice tempo. Tempo. Okay. Is that like karate? No. Yes. Oh, okay. Is Very it taekwondo? Good. Is the tempo? Tempo karate. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Así que Lady tiene ahí a su entrenamiento para cuidarse a sola, right? Very good. Excellent, lady. What about the, the rest? What about you, Mary? Mary, do you practice sports? I love swimming, teacher. Oh, really? You love swimming? That's wonderful, okay? And what about you, let's see, Anita? Do you practice sports? Um, I teacher you on <laughs> So you don't <laughs> practice? No, actually, in my case, the only thing that I am um, able to do is just to talk. That medio correr ahí en la máquina, and that's it. It's just all right, but no, nowadays it's very difficult. Pero Anita dice ninguno. Okay, so no problem, Anita. What about you? Let's see, Emperatriz, do you practice sports? When, eh, eh, ESL Gola, ESL Gola, I practice eh, swimming. Oh, swimming. Okay, very yes. good. Excellent. Bueno, por ahí dicen que es un deporte bien completo, right? It helps you with, you know, developing uh, and working several parts of your body. Okay, yes. excellent. What about you? Let's see, uh, Fatima, do you practice sports? Excuse me? Do you practice sports? Um... I don't know, teacher. You don't practice sports, okay? Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. What about Lorita? What about you? Do you practice sports? Uh, for example, I go uh, uh, running. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Excellent. I go running. Okay. I don't know if that is the one that we call jogging. Es mi favorito, por eso es que cuando uno sale como a trotar, tal vez no, pero bueno, ¿verdad? Pero sí, si sale a trotar, that's showing, right? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually it is, and, uh, and, and it makes you feel, you know, like, um, I mean, uh, it makes you feel relaxed and energized. Quizás esas son las dos cosas que siento yo que describe en este deporte. It makes you feel relaxed. And it makes you feel energized. Teacher, mm -hmm. teacher, I had a question. Trotar is jogging. Jogging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go jogging. Y, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So now in the video, guys, thank you guys for answering my questions. Okay. Just give me one. And we have several sports, um, you know, uh, in the United States and in Canada, right? However, they are, they have been classified in the different seasons, right? Or the different estaciones del año. As you know, the weather, you know, plays a very good, um, you know, uh, a very interesting, I would say, part, you know, within 
the type of sports that are played right among people. So we have here the first um, two uh, examples, right? And we have the first season, which is spring, right? Primavera. Now, during the spring, people play golf and they play soccer, right? Soccer, like the one that we practice here, okay? And then we have uh, the second, you know, season, which is uh, in, well, summer, right? And it says in the summer, people play basketball, they play tennis, they play volleyball, and they go swimming, right? So we have four different sports that are played during summer, right? Which is that, you know, hot and warm season, right? And then we have in the next one, in the fall, people play football, right? They go bike riding, right? And they go hiking. So bike riding is, um, you know, when you take your bicycle and you just go, right? And just ride and ride and ride. Como ir a bicicletear, diríamos aquí, ¿verdad? Uh, go hiking, bueno, es más que todo, uh, whenever you go to a mountain, right, and you start, you know, walking up the hill, right, es como, creo que senderismo le llamamos nosotros acá, right, that type. And then we have the last uh, season, which is winter. Now, winter is a very important season for them because it's only during winter that uh, they can play hockey, right, they can play um, basketball ice skating and also they go skiing right so uh, actually um you know if the weather doesn't fulfill the conditions right they won't be they won't be able to go and, and um, you know have those types of activities si ustedes se fijan chicos hay algunos deportes con los que nosotros usamos play y hay algunos con los que yo uso go right entonces um it's just a matter of remembering, right, which is which, okay? Ahí le voy a compartir yo un cuadrito en donde pueden ver cuáles son los que van a usar con play y cuáles van a usar con go, okay? Now, in El Salvador, in El Salvador, is a little bit different. Number one, because the seasons that we have are not the same, right? Prácticamente solo tenemos dos, ¿verdad? ¿Y cuáles son esas dos que tenemos, vean? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Summer. Exactly. And? Maybe winter, but if not. Yeah, it's kind of our rainy, rainy season, right? It's kind of a rainy season. We don't have snow. We don't have cold weather, but we have rainy season, right? Okay, give me one sec. We have a rainy season. So in, in that case, um, winter. I, yeah, uh -huh. it's like kind of winter, but uh, with, with rain, right? We have our rainy season. Now, when we have rainy season, right, the weather becomes a little bit uh, between cold and warm. So the humidity that, uh, you know, you can, uh, it's very high. Now, what are the type of sports that we play in El Salvador, right? Those are the sports that they play in the United States and Canada. And then uh, we have, you know, the ones that probably we play here, okay? So what are the sports that are popular or that, are, that we play in El Salvador? What are the sports that we play in El Salvador? The soccer. Soccer. Okay, very good. So actually we play soccer, right? Uh, it's one of the most, well, I would say the most popular probably sport, right, in the country. And incluso podría decir que en la región, right? So soccer is very popular. So besides soccer, what else do we play? Volleyball. Volleyball. Okay. I remember in the past, volleyball used to um, used to be like very popular for some reason. But I don't know. 
it, it changed a little bit porque ahora siento que ya casi no se hizo todo el juego, pero me acuerdo que hubo un tiempo en el que sí was very popular. ¿Qué otro deporte, chicos? Le voy a pasar. Basketball. Basketball, right? So, yes, that's true. Uh, le voy a pasar el, el cuadrito aquí. Okay, so there we have some ex exercise and sports. Están unos con do, están unos con play y están unos con go. Okay, ahí lo pueden ver el cuadrito. Y eh, um, incluso tienen más vocabulario, ¿verdad? No, hay unos que se pueden con ambos. Se puede con play y se puede con, con, con go, right? As, como van a poder observar ahí en el cuadrito que les pasé. Okay, so... Um, Eh, por ahí escuché riding, it, it's true, right? Uh, actually, uh, go bike riding is it's popular in El Salvador. The only problem is that in El Salvador, we don't have, you know, the space or we don't have the specific place, right, where people can go uh, bike riding. Or si tenemos, pues son bien limitados, y es bien poquito espacio. As you know, there are other countries that they have built, right? They have built specific sections on streets so people can go can go to work, you know, um, riding their bikes, right? So that would be wonderful, of course, right? Okay, so, ¿qué más, chicos? Is that, is that it? ¿Solo eso jugamos por acá or do we do something else? Yes, uh, baseball. Perdón? Baseball. Surf. Surf. Oh, well, yeah. What? Do aerobic. Aerobics. That is correct, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So in surf, surf has become a very popular, you know, sport, right? Surfing. Especially because of the beaches that we have in El Salvador, right? Um, and lots of people come from other countries. And they come here because of the waves, right? Por las horas. Because of the waves. Because they can come and practice surfing. Um, you know, in the best scenario possible, right? Or in the best possible scenario. So that's that's kind of cool. Now we have, in as a wrap up, right? We have four different seasons in Canada and the United States, but in El Salvador we have only two. We have our uh, probably what um, summer and our rainy season, which is kind of their winter, right? But winter in our case is just rain. We don't have snow. And, you know, generally, the temperature doesn't go down. No, no, esa temperatura no baja mucho. So that allows us to play as many sports as we want. Por supuesto, menos esos que juegan allá en la nieve y todo eso. We don't do that, right? But then um, that's a little bit of the vocabulary that we have for sports. Más el vocabulario que les, que les acabo de eh, compartir ahí en, la, en el chat, okay? So let's see. Teacher, yeah. sorry, what do you say, patineta? How do you say? Ah, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, creo que es rollerblade. Rollerblade. Or roller, no, espérame. Board, roll. Skateboard, skateboard creo que es. Rollerblade son los patines. Skateboard. Skate, es el patín. Y es que, es que ahí la puse, eh, lo puse ahí en el chat, pero como... <laughs> Se va en privado, como a veces ustedes me escriben en privado, se va a primer, la persona, la última persona que me escribió. Es que igual. Ah, ok. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Sorry. So, in the 5.2, that's the second, you know, um, point in section number five. And it says, by the end of this class, you will learn. Siento que hoy las pantallas se me han y me cuesta encontrarlas para desactivar porque desactivan los autos de ustedes. By the end of this class, you will learn how to ask and answer simple present WH questions, que es un tema que ya vimos. Entonces, si se recuerdan, additionally, you will practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting or in a real life scenario, right? So, uh, actually, this is kind of interesting. 
yo sé que ya habíamos visto el tema, pero no sé si se recuerdan que les dije que iba a aparecer más adelante, right? So, there you have it. Ahí lo tienen, right? So, here, there is a conversation, right? That it's kind of funny, right? Un poco gracioso antes. And it says, listen in practice, we have a conversation between Lauren and Justin, right? And so, Lauren says, so, Justin, what do you do in your free time? And Justin says, well, I love sports. Really? What sports do you like? Hmm, hockey, baseball, and soccer are my favorites. Wow, you're a really good athlete. When do you play all these sports? Oh, I don't play these sports. I just watch them on television, right? Porque el parecido pura coincidencia, especialmente con la tita, right? So, yeah, it's true, right? Sometimes we just watch them and we said one day I will do it. Y nunca lo hago, nunca lo hago, por ejemplo, yo. So, that's kind of funny, right? That's a conversation between Lauren and Justin. Y pues, Lauren bien maravillada, right? Con un atleta, right? Todo un atleta, Justin. But actually, he, he was used to just watch them on TV. Okay, so let's have, uh, bueno, no sé si hay alguna pregunta con respecto al vocabulario, chicos. Question? No question. Okay, so si no hay preguntas de vocabulario, eh, si, que quisiera tener como, you know, un par de voluntarios para que me hagan la conversación. Two volunteers to read the conversation. Solo uno. Solo dos. A mí solo dos gente. Ahí tengo a Teresa y tengo a Lady. Bye. Excelente. So, Teresa, ayúdame con Lauren y Lady, ayúdame con Justin. Ok. Ok. Uh, so, Justin, what do you do in your free time? Well, I love sports. Really? What sport do you like? Mm, hockey, baseball, and soccer are my favorite. Wow, you are really good athlete. When do you play all this sport? Oh, I don't play this sport. I just watch them on television. <laughs> Thank you very much, oh. girl. Ahora sí, dice, right? So imagine he was just watching them on television, right? Okay. Sí, hasta ahí llegaba, ¿verdad? Las dejé terminar o las interrumpí. Hasta ahí llegaba. Hasta ahí llegaba. Okay, thank you very much, eh, lady and Teresa, very kind. Okay, so, as you can see, the questions that we have, las preguntas que tenemos son las mismas, y como ustedes ya saben cómo funcionan esas preguntas, right, we have, what do you, what do you do in your free time? Es la primera pregunta, what do you do in your free time? Luego, pues, ella le hace la siguiente pregunta. What sports do you like? What sports do you like? Okay. And then it says, when do you play all these sports, right? When do you play all these sports, right? When do you play all these sports? Now, these questions, if I voy a poco. Okay, so these questions, right? Son las que nosotros le llamamos las information questions. Information questions. O las WH questions, right? Entonces, esas son eh, las, las, el tipo de preguntas que estamos manejando aquí. Dentro de la, dentro de la, de la, de la del punto, perdón, eh, punto, punto 3, 5.3, ¿ok? Ya habíamos visto el tema, ¿verdad? Ya sabemos cuál es la fórmula que estamos trabajando acá, ¿ok? Prácticamente, pues, el punto principal es que hablar un poquito sobre sports, ¿verdad? Que son comunes en estos dos países, ¿verdad? Mencionamos un poco sobre lo que nosotros hacemos acá. And then, the second point is to have a reminder of the information questions or the WH questions, ¿verdad? Entonces decíamos, y, y no sé si ustedes se recuerdan, ¿verdad? Hablamos de las WH words. Y pues decíamos que cuando tenemos information questions or WH questions, we're going to begin with a, w, with a WH, 
WH word. Pero también decíamos que no siempre va a ser una WH word. Algunas veces va a ser una WH. Vamos a ver quién se acuerda. ¿Alguien que se recuerde? H W. Y ya, es la, la, ya, tenemos how, que es, a esta no sé si a eso se refiere. Lady. Yes. Okay, muy bien. En este caso puede ser cualquiera de esas. La palabra que andaba buscando era phrase, ¿ok? ¿Cómo es típico? ¿Se acuerdan que yo les dije que algunas veces yo solo voy a ocupar en la WH word, pero que algunas veces no solo necesito la WH word, sino que necesito una WH phrase? ¿Verdad? Entonces, cuando yo tengo la WH phrase, todo ese pedacito es el que yo ando, es, es la pieza de información que yo ando buscando, ¿right? Luego, después de, de, ese, de ese elemento, pues, seguía el auxiliary, decíamos, ¿verdad? Auxiliary. Luego teníamos el subject. Luego teníamos el verb en su forma base. Y teníamos al final un complemento, si es que había, y pues poníamos un question mark, ¿ok? Entonces, cuando yo vengo ya acá a las preguntas, y empiezo a clasificarlo, si usted se fija, ¿verdad? Tenemos acá la WH word, en este caso tenemos el auxiliar, tengo el subject, tengo el verb, tengo el complement y tengo mi question mark. Cuando ya llego a esta pregunta, ya no es what, sino que es what sports do you like, right? Entonces aquí pues no hay ningún complemento y paso yo solo el question mark al final. La siguiente pregunta igual, ¿verdad? Es un when, pregunta por tiempo, right? When do you play, right? When do you play all these sports, right? Y ahí pues tenemos el question mark. Entonces, en este caso, la segunda pregunta está haciendo referencia a una WH phrase, ¿verdad? A una WH phrase y si es solo la WH word, vamos a iniciar acá. Pero luego el resto de los elementos siempre van a ser igual, ¿verdad? Auxiliary, subject, verb, and complement, ¿ok? That's how I'm going to, um, you know, uh, make up all the questions, right? When it comes to present simple and they are information questions. Now, ¿cuál es el tipo de pregunta que voy, perdón, cuál es el tipo de respuesta que yo voy a obtener con esto, chicos? Vamos a ver quién se recuerda. Cuando yo digo yes, no questions, ¿qué tipo de respuesta ando buscando? Uh -huh. Cerrada. Uh -huh. Short question. All right. Answer, perdón. Yes, in that case, cuando yo digo yes, no question, es un yes o un no. ¿Verdad? Es un sí o un no. Ok, o como decía ladies, just a close question, right? Cerrada, porque me va a decir esto o me va a decir esto, right? Ahora bien, tenemos, como decía, creo que Emperatriz lo dijo, tenemos las short answers. Muy bien, ¿verdad? Porque si a mí me preguntan, do you live in San Salvador? Pregunta cerrada, como nos había dicho Lady, y como nos dice Emperatriz, voy a decir un yes, I do, or no, I don't. Right? Entonces, en ese caso, eh, pues, yo tengo que dar mi respuesta con una short answer. Muy bien, ¿ok? Pero, ¿qué sucede con las information questions? ¿Qué tipo de pregunta estoy, estoy tratando, perdón, qué tipo de respuesta estoy tratando de obtener con una de esas? Aquí ya no es un sí o un no. ¿Qué estoy queriendo obtener? More information. Very good, right? I'm asking for details, right? I'm asking for specific details. I, for example, if I'm asking what sports, ¿verdad? So I want you to tell me the sports, right, that you practice with the sports that you like, okay? Por ejemplo, si yo pregunto, eh, what time, what time do you go to work, ¿verdad? So I'm asking for that time specifically, right? Ah, teacher, I go to work at 6 a.m. in the morning. Ah, okay. So I'm asking for a very specific thing, and I'm asking for details about that specific thing, right? Cuando yo les puse el cuadro comparativo, no sé si recuerdan, ¿verdad? Que en una 
era un yes o un no. Y en la otra decía, give as many details as possible. So give as much information as possible. So that is about the, um, the uh, information questions or WH questions. No me gusta tanto llamarle WH question porque en the end, pues, incluye tantas cosas que I prefer to call them information questions. Vaya, chicos, en este punto me voy a detener, which is point three, five point three, simple present WH questions in conversation. I love sports. And tomorrow we're going to continue with the topic. According to the, to the schedule, I would say, right, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, we're going to uh, work in section five. And then on Thursday, we're going to check a little bit on the final exam. Pero solamente les pido de favor que adelanten si pueden. Y si encuentran algún inconveniente con la plataforma, me avisen. No sé si había un ejercicio al final que, es un, que había presentado una confusión que me estaban preguntando. Pero igual usted trabájelo y me avisa porque así pues eh, podemos ver cómo lo resolvemos. Así que I'm going to stop here. A menos que alguien tenga alguna pregunta, con mucho gusto, pues yo las puedo contestar. Is there any question? Questions regarding the instruction? Um, okay, very good. Uh, well, I'm going to stop here, guys. Thank you very much for, for joining. I know that you are busy. Right? I know that you have so many things to do. But thank you very much for, you know, um, allowing me right to be with you during one hour so i'll meet you tomorrow guys and just continue working in the platform okay so take care have a great afternoon and i'll see you tomorrow bye 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 bye, bye teacher bye, bye. Thank, you. thank you teacher you're welcome take care guys bye, -bye.